I take it that all students in our country are interested to know what is India. What is it that makes India different from all other countries of the world? What is distinctive about India? What is the best way in which India can serve whole humanity in the best possible manner? And for that purpose, one has to study Indian history. You take up any book on Indian history and you will find that the very first chapter will be related to what is called Vedic period. Now I know that all students read this word Vedic period. Some of you might have asked the question, what is Veda? Why is the first period of Indian history is called Vedic period? You might have even been told that the earliest document that is available in regard to Indian culture is the Veda. Now this word Veda is generally known even to the villagers in India. And I am sure the students of India are also familiar with this word Veda. Unfortunately, not many of you have asked the question, what is this word Veda? What does it mean? And uh, what is this book called Veda? Normally, this book Veda is hardly to be found in your surroundings. And since it is very difficult to get access to that book, in due course of time, even the curiosity evaporates in regard to this book. But you know, all knowledge becomes authentic when you see things in their concrete form. So I shall begin by showing you, first of all, this great book which is called Veda. You know the word Veda comes from the Sanskrit root Vid. I think all of you should know this word Vid and Veda. I will write for you. Vid. Vid is a word indicating a verb. You know grammar quite well. There are nouns, pronouns, there are verbs, there are adverbs, adjectives, prepositions. And each one has a specific meaning. A verb is a word which indicates activity. Now the word with refers to the activity of knowing. With is to know. 
this is the word from where you know very well another word which is very familiar vidya we have vidya peet vidyalaya and the word vidya is very very well known in india in almost all the languages of india the original root is vid now the very first book of india is known as veda that is because this book it is said contains highest knowledge not only knowledge but highest knowledge when you grow up in due course of time you will try to verify whether this claim is valid or not but in india it is largely believed by a large number of people that veda contains the highest knowledge and that this knowledge was gained by some of the greatest human beings who walked on the earth it may be surprise to many of us that there was a period of which this particular book called veda is a result where some very great human beings meditated underwent tremendous effort of what is called tapasya and they attained the highest knowledge the result of this highest knowledge is now available to all of us surprisingly when you read this great book veda you have some very astonishing things in it but let me first of all show you the first book of the veda in fact there are four books of the veda the first book is called rigveda samhita rig veda and samhita in other words this book is called samhita because samhita means anthology collection why it is called collection i will come to it a little later but veda is a kind of a collection of a number of statements of knowledge the word rik actually means him him of praise him of call him which comes out of a human being in greatest ecstasy of wonder sense of mystery even victory when somebody is very victorious then from his heart a song can emerge or words of praise for all those who have helped in the victory that song those words of praise they emerge out of your consciousness
this is the briefest statement of this great book called Rigveda Samhita. Now this book when you open, in fact not many people have seen this kind of any text. Therefore it is very important that even after this class is over, each one of you should be able to hold this book in your hands and should be able to open the pages of this book and should try to see what this book contains. It's a kind of a physical perception of this great book. Why do I call it such a great book? There are three reasons why this book is a very great book. If there is in the world history, not only Indian history, but in the world history, if you go backward, backward, backward in time and try to see when human beings began to think for the first time, you must imagine that the first man may not have been able to think so well as you children or young boys and girls of today can think so quickly because of the advancement of civilization. But in the most primitive times, people may not have been able to think so rapidly. But a time came, even then, when human beings began to think deeply, greatly, vastly. And that happened also long, long, long ago. After that long, long period, people began to articulate their thoughts. They began to develop a language and began to search for knowledge. They could store the knowledge. They could communicate articles of knowledge from each other. And a time must have come when even the language became so developed as to assume the form of poetry. You know, it is easy to write in prose, but difficult to write in poetry. Now, surprisingly, you find that in the whole human history, the first book, the first document that is available, there might have been many other documents, they have perished. But if you want to find one text in which those human beings who thought deeply and greatly and vastly, if you want to know what were their thoughts, what were they thinking about, if you want an answer to this question, you will find that the earliest such document is this book, Rigveda Samhita. That is the first reason why every one of us should be acquainted with this one. Merely as a student of human history, not only of Indian history, but as a student of human history. Secondly, this book is written in Sanskrit language. You will see that the whole book is in Sanskrit language. All over. That means that by the time that this book came to be written, and I must say the word written is not appropriate, because the writing came much later. But by the time that this, this book 
came to be composed by that time sanskrit language must have been sufficiently developed and it must have been so developed that some very great human beings were able to write this language in poetic form and that is what you should observe that the entire book consists of poems the third thing that is very important to remember is that these poems are very well composed these poems are not ordinary poems those who are capable of judging poetry they have concluded that this is exquisite poetry it is a poetry of the highest beauty you are aware that poems are normally written in metrical forms you know there are meters i do not know if you have studied any meter in any language but in sanskrit itself there are many many meters of sanskrit poetry and many of these meters are now quite well known even in our regional languages in hindi gujarati marathi bengali these meters are available what is a meter a meter is the flow of poetic words in which there are measurements in which you can measure and different meters refer to different number of words in a given line or there should be as in english poetry what is called stress in english poetry most largely speaking there is no numerical number of number of words which are to be in a given meter but as you will see that every word when you pronounce it has some kind of a stress a hard stress soft stress and on the basis of the stress you can determine what kind of poetic meter it has in sanskrit very largely it is dependent upon the number of words and also the stress that is to say stress which arises out of whether it is a short or long take for example the word ga and la the ga is a short pronunciation la is a longer pronunciation so there is a combination of words in such a way that there should be a kind of a flow in which the short words and the longer words they flow in a particular manner now you will see that to write poetry itself is difficult but to write poetry in metrical form becomes very difficult and the great surprise is that all these poems are in various forms of meters not one meter several different meters that means that when this knowledge was being composed the sanskrit language had become so much developed so much articulated that is metrical form in varieties of its variety various forms that had developed and was made available 
one of the most famous meters is called Gayatri. The word Gayatri you might have heard, but word Gayatri is very important because that is also a kind of a meter, like Anushtop is another meter, and there are many other meters. Mandakranta is another meter, Shikharani is another meter. There are many, many meters in Sanskrit language. The famous uh, poem of Kalidasa, Meghadutam, is written in Mandakranta. Mandakranta, the word itself is very indicative of the meaning. That which rises, Kranta, that which rises, Manda, slowly, in which the, the whole flow of the poem flows slowly upwards. There is also a meter called Bhujangi. Bhujangi is a kind of a meter in which the flow of the words follows the movement of the waving of the hood of the serpent. It starts slowly, goes upward and then again goes downward. It's a Bhujangi Chanda. Meter is called Chandas in Vedic uh, language. So, this is the third greatness of this particular poetry that we find here. This particular book consists of exquisite poetry. You might even say consummate art has been bestowed in the composition of these verses in this book. Now, having heard of this preliminary material about this Veda, you might like to ask as to what is written in it. I said that it contains highest knowledge. So, one might like to ask, give one example of what is that highest knowledge. Now, if I really have to give you examples, there are many, many of them. But I don't want to burden you so much. I will only give you one simple verse which is normally available quite easily in India. Many of you must have heard about it, must have seen it, must have recited it. So, it is not very difficult. So, I will give you an example immediately. It is called Gayatri Mantra. That is to say, a mantra is a verse. It is a composition of words and the sounds of words. Now, these words which are composed in a particular meter which is Gayatri. Three means three and Gaya means three melodies. There are three rhythms. So, if somebody can recite to you Gayatri Mantra, you will find that there are three steps and three rhythms in it. There are many Gayatri mantras in the Veda, not one. But the one which has become very famous is the one which I will now write to you, write for you. And I would like you all to copy out in your own book because it is the one simple one known to everybody in this country and very largely recited by so many people in our country. And uh, when you come to know the meaning of it, you will still feel it to be a treasure. <laughs> 